information in the news. Ramon Salaverria is professor of journalism and associate dean of research at the School of Communication of the University of Navarra. And he's the leader of a project in which we collaborate to explore the dynamics of this information about health news in social media, specifically those related to COVID-19. We consider that the topic disinformation in the news or fake news, as it is also known, is of general interest of all of us. And that's why we have invited Ramon to present this seminar. As you will see, Ramon has extensive knowledge on the subject and summarizes and explains the problem very clearly. I hope that after the seminar, we will be more aware of the problem and have a clear idea of the meaning and consequences of this information in our society. I hope everyone finds the seminar useful and interesting. And I don't want to get long and I give way to Ramon Salaverria. Please, Ramon, the audience is for you. Thank you, Maria Jose, and thanks uh, the BSC for inviting me for this uh, guest session. I'm uh, quite impressed about the amount of people who gathered and the different uh, skills and expertise that you all have. Uh, first of all, obviously, I have to apologize because uh, I'm not a native speaker, although I believe uh, I will be able to explain with some uh, uh, accuracy, the, the, the things that I would like to, to share with you. Um, first of all, just let me let me confess that I'm not a, a computer scientist. I don't I don't have uh, the kind of uh, expertise or or um, uh, I've not been uh, researching in, in computing. Uh, I am a journalist myself, and uh, I, I work some long time ago uh, as a journalist in Spain in several uh, media uh, companies and uh, uh, and after that I became a, a, a scholar I became a professor a researcher and I've been researching on digital media for 25 years now uh, so that gives me the kind of uh, I don't know the, the the perspective the historical perspective of what has been uh, happening uh, on the media industry not only here in Spain but especially in uh, Spanish-speaking countries and even uh, in all other uh, European countries as well so today I would like to to share some thoughts or some ideas about the what is uh, going on in the terms of uh, of uh, the so-called uh, fake news uh, problem. I, I have prepared a, um, a presentation that I'm going to share with you now. Is it working? Yeah. Okay, so the title of my presentation today is uh, that they are fake, but not just news. Uh, and I would like to share some ideas about how to properly understand the multiple forms of uh, disinformation. Um, let's begin with some uh, relevant people of, of this information. Um, I, I would like to ask you, each and every of you, which is the first face, which is the first person who comes to your mind when we are talking about disinformation? Donald Trump. Um, no, 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 no. Okay, <laughs> that was an easy question. I mean, that, at least for me, because I believe that I had a hundred percent of 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 uh, correct answer. Uh, this is the person that has impersonated uh, over the last uh, four years the concept and the consequences of the fake news. This is one of the many, actually, hundreds of tweets that he published over the not only uh, during the the presidency but even before he became president of the united states the first the very first tweet in which he mentioned the word fake news was uh, uh, in november 2016 when he was uh, running for becoming a candidate actually and um, and he blamed the cnn for publishing fake news. He actually, he seems that he liked the, the expression and he used it uh, over the last uh, four years, hundreds of times. Okay, that was, that was easy. Um, uh, the, the, the 
the Washington Post uh, a couple of weeks ago may published a, a report uh, making a kind of uh, I don't know uh, uh, analysis of the amount of uh, misleading claims or lies that uh, or exaggerations or different kinds of of, of fake news that uh, this person uh, uh, well expressed over the the last four years and it was over. 30,000, which is amazing. Okay, you all got that. Everybody got uh, the idea that Donald Trump is related to this information, but does anybody of you, anybody of you recognize this one? I know it, uh, it's in Rome. <laughs> okay, Davide, who, who, who is this person and why I am uh, uh, talking about this person now. Ah, it's amazing. So the story of these statues is the is the following. Basically, uh, people, if they want to complain anonymously about uh, you know the state or especially the Pope in Rome, they basically put um, a poem. They they used to be poems actually in rhyme uh, uh, there on the surface, and this is anonymous. And as you can see, like there are in the picture, you can see different. Papers, yes. Exactly. Sa Pasquino, the name is Pasquino. Exactly. This is the statue of Pasquino. And probably all of you have heard about the, the term Pasquinade in, in Spanish, Pasquines. It comes from this uh, statue, uh, where, as uh, Davide has properly explained, since the 16th century, uh, people started to well, to publish libels on, and accusations and fake news of the uh, Renaissance, more or less. We could call it that way. So this is another relevant person in the history of this information. Uh, Pasquinades had become, a, 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 well, a, a coined term to uh, express the kind of uh, published uh, blames or published accusation allegations against other people. Third opportunity. Who is this person? Does anybody of you know this person? This is William Randolph Hearst, uh, who was actually a businessman, but uh, has um, passed to the history as the publisher of the first and biggest ever yellow newspaper. He was the publisher of the New York Journal uh, in the late 19th century. And this journal uh, was the responsible for the Spanish-American War, as we call it in Spain, La Guerra de Cuba. Um, this newspaper blamed Spain for having sunk the main battleship, which was uh, well uh, docked in the Habana in, in Cuban uh, docks, and uh, this this is one of the a couple of of, of uh, uh, front pages that were published by the um, by the newspaper uh, of uh, William Randolph Hearst. Historians have uh, confirmed that it, this was a news fabrication. Uh, that wasn't true. Uh, it wasn't, uh, Spanish wasn't the, the responsible of sinking the boat. Uh, it seems that it was an explosion that happened in the interior of the uh, battleship by itself. But this newspaper found out, actually this publisher found out that it was very good for selling newspaper, blaming someone a, uh, a foreign uh, country, in this case, it was a Spain, and actually it, 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 it uh, provoked uh, the, the work with Spain that led to uh, well, some historical developments. So this is another relevant person uh, who brought the disinformation phenomena to the media. And what about this one? Does anybody of you recognize this person? This is a relevant person in the history of human, uh, humanity over the last, uh, I mean, in, in the uh, 20th century. This is Goebbels. Uh, this one is Goebbels. Uh, 
the the Nazi minister for uh, for propaganda or for all the media uh, 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 strategy to blame Jews of being responsible of the loss of the World War One and some other uh, well. Uh, mm, aspects that led to the Holocaust in the Second World War. This, this person developed the techniques of, uh, of the propaganda over the 30s and 40s. Um, and these propaganda techniques were later um, taken by uh, the, the, the rivals of, of the Nazis. Uh, so both the communist uh, uh, bloc and the, uh, and the Western bloc uh, took the lessons that were developed by the, the Nazis and they developed their own uh, propaganda strategy in both sides. Um, uh, you, you can find uh, books that talk about disinformation in the Soviet uh, uh, bloc or the communist bloc. Look at here, an insider's view. And here we have a warriors of disinformation, how lies videotape and the US, USIA won the world Cup. The USIA was the agency for information of the US uh, government. And you see again, an insider's account. So it's basically the same in both sides, using information as a weapon to uh, hard to gain some kind of uh, advantage against uh, the rivals. So we arrived, uh, obviously there have been many different uh, steps and episodes in this uh, long history of this information, but we are arrived to the present time. And uh, um, you might recall that uh, uh, by the end of the year 2016, uh, the word of the year that was chosen by the Oxford Dictionaries was the term post-truth. Post -truth. This was before uh, the beginning of the of the um, just at the, at the beginning actually of the uh, Trump presidency, uh, Donald Trump won the the the, the, the U.S. elections, uh, uh, presidential elections on November uh, 2016, and on December 2016, after the uh, um, political campaign, especially which was very very debated. Um, well, this. Uh, relevant uh, organization decided to uh, select this word as the word of uh, the year 2016. In the year 2016, some other relevant um, events took place. For instance, the Brexit, uh, the Brexit vote, uh, which took place in, uh, in June 2016. And it seems it, that is, I'm, I'm talking this, uh, I'm using this word, but it, it's not, it doesn't seem, I mean, it's, it's actually confirmed that some uh, misleading uh, reports and information and inaccurate data led to, used by some of the uh, 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 political leaders who were uh, leading the campaign, uh, led to the decision that was taken by, by a whole country. So we see that this kind of uh, misleading or deceptive uh, uh, contexts uh, do have actually very relevant effects on the population and the societies. Uh, I will mention just uh, briefly uh, something that uh, touches very, 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 um, very much to the to many of you that uh, are listening to me, uh, listening to me from from Barcelona. In in the first of October two thousand and seventeen, you might recall that there was another huge campaign from both sides, actually from multiple sides of uh, of. Uh, um, so-called well, uh, information or, or data. This is one of the most well-known example. This was a, a picture fabrication because the original picture was this one. Uh, and uh, it seems that it want to somehow resemble the famous Iwo Jima uh, picture of the American troops uh, taking this uh, little island of uh, the Pacific against the Japanese uh, troops. So, I mean, bigger or, 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 or smaller, there are fabrications, uh, 
incorrect, de deceptive uh, contents all over. Um, so there are some some words here. Propaganda. We I have already used propaganda. I have I haven't used yet uh, the term hoaxes, um, urban legends, conspiracy, conspiracy theories, alternative facts. It was used by the uh, the Trump um, uh, government uh, uh, as one of the um, well. Uh, uh, terms to not to use another term. Uh, do you find any any other term missing here? Actually, the term that has been used most of the times over the last uh, years. Okay. Uh, exactly. And we, we have look, look at these expressions, original copy, passive aggressive, alone together, clearly confused, all these words, all these expressions have something in common. It's actually a contradictory combination of two terms. I mean, the two terms, original copy, are contradictory. Passive aggressive are contradictory, alone together, clearly confused. Well, it's exactly which happens with the expression fake news. You can't get fake news because if they are fake, they are not news. Uh, so these are these all are including the, the term fake news are what what is called oxymorons. There are uh, a combination of two contradictory uh, 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 terms, and um, most of the theory about disinformation uh, has uh, conceded that uh, this is not a very accurate term to uh, designate the different phenomena that are happening around propaganda, disinformation, and so on. Which are the types of false information, speaking in, let's say, academic terms? Basically, there are two terms, misinformation and disinformation. In the first case, misinformation refers to the unintentional mistake, when you are uh, telling someone something which is not correct, but you are not trying to deceive him or her. And in the second case, this information is a deliberate deception. I mean, you are willing to, uh, you will to uh, lie or to deceive someone purposefully. Um, in the first case, we will find, uh, Concepts such as omission, confusion, inaccuracy, all of them refer to non unintentional or unintentional uh, 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 concepts. And in the second case, you have you have misrepresentation, manipulation, fabrication, which is strictly speaking deliberate deception. Okay. Probably the most uh, influential. Um, uh, not, not researcher, because she's actually a, a journalist, but who has become a relevant person in terms of, of uh, describing the main concepts of uh, disinformation is uh, Claire Wardle. And she, in 2017, published a couple of, of, of uh, reports. And in one of those reports, she actually made a kind of continuum or uh, explanation of the different types of uh, disinformation. And we see here from satire and parody to misleading content to imposter content, and finally to fabric fabricated content, meaning that the satire or parody is um, less important and probably the fabricated content is more serious. And all these categories, all these four categories as are based basically in three different approaches or forms of deceiving people, which are false connection, false content, and manipulated content. Um, which are the propitiatory factors of mis and this information? Well, there are many. Uh, I, I will mention first one that touches very close to all of you, uh, since you are a computer scientist. It, there are technological factors that are um, actually um, 
contributing to the expansion of uh, this information. There are some other counter, uh, I mean, some other uh, elements that uh, are fighting against this information thanks to technology. But we must assume, we must recognize that some algorithms uh, uh, aim at boosting engagement are also contributing to the expansion of this information. Let me explain this. Uh, in social networks, for instance, uh, uh, networks such as uh, Facebook or Twitter or whatever, Instagram or whatever, uh, this, the, the, the business model of these uh, social networks is based on the engagement, on the constant participation by the people. But it's not actually very relevant whether the information they share is true or false, as long as they keep sharing content. So uh, it has happened over the last uh, years that these uh, uh, platforms, digital platforms, have uh, made a big, big profit based not only for truthful information, but also for the deceptive uh, information. So they have not been very uh, worried about the problem of this information so far. Secondly, we have the psychosociological factors. And here uh, we should mention, obviously, one of the main concepts of, of, of psychology, which is the confirmation bias, uh, which means that people tend to understand, tend to uh, consider only the arguments, only the facts that uh, align with their own mindset or their own uh, interpretation of the reality or their own uh, ideology. So we tend to focus only on the arguments that give us the, the reason and uh, we, tend, uh, we usually discard some other uh, non-confirmatory um, arguments. Uh, more recent and are, are another couple of uh, concepts, which are the echo chambers and filter bubbles, which means that in the environment of the social networks, people tends to gather, uh, tend to gather in, 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 in networks that connect with their own view of the reality. Uh, they, they follow people who gave them the reason, who, who, who are uh, aligned with their uh, uh, well, with their ideological uh, approach to reality. And that, although the, 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 the networks are open and we can obviously follow anyone uh, in um, uh, all, all over the world, uh, what uh, finally happens is that people tend to, uh, uh, to gather around some uh, ideological leaders who connect with their own view. We should also mention the political factors. We actually have already mentioned them, the rise of populisms of all kinds from the left to the right. Uh, there are populisms all over. And, um, and this kind of approach to politics uh, has uh, fostered uh, the development of this information. And he, this has produced a huge polarization, especially this has been, uh, the ideological polarization has been especially studied in the, in the US campaigns uh, uh, over the last few years. And it has been found that comparing to what was happening 20 years ago, nowadays, the US society is much more divided, much more polarized. Finally, we have to uh, uh, recognize as, as well that there are some flaws, some uh, limitations, some weaknesses uh, related to journalism or to media industry. Um, first of all, we, we could mention that the phenomena of news avoidance. When people receive constantly a huge amount of information that is overwhelming them, they tend to uh, forget about that. I mean, they, they, they they don't care about that, and that uh, that has that phenomenon has has happened over the last uh, years uh, during the COVID nineteen pandemic. Uh, at the beginning, in March twenty twenty, uh, April twenty twenty, people was eager to receive uh, much information about the COVID nineteen pandemic. But after May, June, and let's compare what uh, our own interest regarding COVID related news today and one year ago. Uh, 
It's completely different. I mean, we, we are all, already fed up of information related to, um, uh, to COVID pandemic, basically because most of the news are negative. When the news are positive, we are happy with that and we can follow those news. And when, uh, I don't know, I probably most of, of you today are, are happy because last night Barcelona uh, won Sevilla in the very last minute. And you all are eager to uh, read news about uh, Barcelona today. But uh, if you, I mean, uh, this team will have uh, lost yesterday, probably you weren't so interested in learning more about the, uh, the match. You see, so there is a sort of news avoidance related to bad news. And uh, the second factor should be, uh, that should be mentioned is the lack of media literacy. We need uh, um, citizens who are responsible for uh, analyzing, interpreting correctly information. And we don't give them uh, the correct um, uh, training or the correct even culture, let's call it that way, to understand what is truth what is uh, what is uh, what is not true? Uh, which are the reliable sources? How to uh, discard uh, uh, dangerous um, practices when we are uh, uh, participating in the social networks and things like that? And I believe, uh, actually, uh, some of the people who are involved in this uh, in this. Uh, uh, seminar today are, are joining with me in another uh, in another project. We believe that uh, fostering media literacy in the society is a key factor to uh, fight against disinformation. Uh, some effects, very briefly, uh, of this uh, misinformation. Well, uh, we have seen that. I mean, I, I have mentioned Brexit uh, problem. I have mentioned. Uh, uh, the U.S. Uh, electoral campaigns over the last few years. I have mentioned the uh, the Catalan situation over the last few years. Was well, social destabilization when you are uh, providing fake information, false information to the people. Uh, this uh, destabilizes uh, destabilizes uh, uh, the society. Uh, secondly, we, we, we should mention the ideological polarization. I already mentioned that, and it's, it's very obvious in the case, especially uh, of the US, but not only. Um, we can also mention the, 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 the development of a hidden again, uh, agenda setting. The people and the organizations that are um, um, purposefully providing this, informa uh, this, this information content, uh, they are trying to um, put some frameworks uh, in, the, in the society, in the people, and setting uh, some topics uh, of public discussion. And this is a hidden agenda, agenda setting. Um, uh, since many of you are also worried about the impact of disinformation on science, we could also mention that disinformation uh, uh, generates suspicion against uh, real science. Uh, and uh, talking about journalism, we could also mention that this generates media distrust. Many people today say that uh, traditional or legacy media uh, are not uh, trustworthy anywhere, anymore. I mean, uh, all of them are lying. Uh, all of them are, 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 are fake. Uh, and this is a mindset that has uh, somehow uh, expanded over the last few years. Well, uh, just in the, in the last minutes of my, of my talk, I would like to talk about the connection between disinformation and COVID-19. Uh, as Maria Jose mentioned at the, at the introduction of this seminar, uh, it, is, it is true that we have been uh, working together in a joint research project uh, one year now. Uh, we began uh, in uh, April last year in a project funded by uh, the BBDA uh, Foundation. And um, we have found that there are many uh, uh, contents that are uh, that are fake related to to the COVID nineteen pandemic. Uh, this is one of the recent reports by one of the fact checking organizations in Spain, uh, Maldita.es. Probably most or all of you 
have heard about that. And uh, as you can see, you see the COVID-19 and its hoaxes, 963 lies. They, they have been more than 1,000 actually, but they have been able to, uh, to debunk or to um, actually to, to spot and, 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 and confirm uh, up to 1,000 uh, lies over the last few years. Um, at the end of the first month uh, of the uh, state of alarm declared in uh, March 14 last year, um, we decided as a first step of our project to, to make a, an analysis of the typology of the hoaxes that were published in that first month. And as you can see, it was a, a, a joint project between a researcher from the University of Navarra and, uh, and your uh, organization, Natalie, is here. Hello. Um, and um, well, uh, I, I will summarize some of the uh, results of this uh, 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 analysis because I, I, I believe it's relevant for, for the things that we are uh, considering now. First of all, we, we try to find where, in which platforms these uh, hoaxes or these lies were basically uh, published and, uh, and shared. And we found out that there was there were this, uh, the social network where nine out of 10 uh, hoaxes or, or disinformation uh, content were shared. Basically in the messaging uh, uh, applications such as WhatsApp, you see that here we have Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, all of them are open. You can check the information of these uh, social networks uh without needing to publish anything but in whatsapp you are sharing with your peers so that uh that is a re very relevant factor to contribute uh to the expansion of uh, of this information as a contrast we can see that the hoaxes um published by the let's say professional media uh, were just uh, very very few, just a four percent of the total. So basically, the amount of, of, of disinformation that uh, reached the society came through social network and not th through uh, uh, professional media. Another relevant uh, detail I will say about the format, the the the, 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 the characteristic, the features of the of the disinformation content. And we see that most of the disinformation doesn't take the form of deep fakes, you know, uh, those uh, very, um, uh, uh, very specific or very uh, advanced uh, videos or, or um, elements like that. I mean, it was just simple, humble text, just uh, small texts that were shared basically through WhatsApp. That was the main focus or the main uh, channel of this information in the first month, I insist. Um, another interesting thing uh, is the origin, the origin of these hoaxes. And we found out that uh, a significant amount of hoaxes weren't created here in Spain, but came from abroad, which is interesting because it means that we are Mm, fighting against the disinformation uh, in an open world. I mean, uh, disinformation is a, is, a, is a global problem, which is affecting not only specific countries or specific cities, but is affecting uh, the whole world. And um, I, I, I will also uh, refer to this because uh, since you all are interested, especially in health and science uh, topics, uh, we found out that, that most of the uh, uh, hoaxes that came uh, related to science and health came from abroad, probably because it's more easier to um, deceive someone uh, if you are telling that, I don't know, the job Hopkins University is uh, saying blah, 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 or the Oxford University is announcing another thing, and it's not true. Uh, because you can hardly mm, confirm that information by yourself. So this is another interesting thing. Well, um, in, our, in our study, we mm, 
beyond uh, making an empirical analysis of the typology and the amount of jokes and the profile of jokes, we try to make a, a let's say, theoretical contribution to understand the different types of, of uh, disinformation genres. And we found four types of uh, disinformation, what we call joke, exaggeration, decontextualization, and deception. You see that there is a sort of difference between those four, these four uh, concepts, joke, exaggeration, decontextualization, and deception. And connecting this with the concepts of myths and disinformation, we see that joke and exaggeration are closer to misinformation, at, that is an intentional mistake. And uh, on the contrary, the contextualization and deception are closer to deliberate uh, deception, which is basically the disinformation. We created this hoax severity diagram, which explains graphically this idea. Uh, if you uh, take two axes of falsehood and willfulness, and you put these four concepts in, in a line, you see that there is a more trivial approach to uh, fake content, which will be the joke and exaggeration, and more serious uh, approaches, but that will be the con decontextualization and deception. And this um, connected with the concept of disinformation and misinformation uh, puts the first two in the area of no unintentional uh, content and uh, the deception and decontextualization in the area of more serious um, um, deliberate uh, deception. Okay, uh, just a few final remarks talking about the, uh, the impact of all this in the news production. How will this, uh, the news production evolve uh, in, the, in the near future? Well, for this, let me let me explain in a timeline. Uh, the first online publications, the first digital publications, appeared 25 years ago uh, by mid 1990s. Um, since then, we have seen that uh, obviously journalists keep uh, producing news. Uh, there were more journalists in the 1990s than uh, those who are working today. Uh, some uh, journalists lost their work, the, the, their jobs um, over the last few years, but still there are many, many journalists working. But the main change here is that um, uh, 25 years ago, all the uh, journalists were non-digital and just a few were digital journalists. And today, a majority of journalists are focused on digital operations. Well, this is the first element. Since the, uh, the first decade of this uh, 21st uh, century, there was another, another how to, uh, to call this? I mean, uh, another source of, uh, of information coming from users. I mean, people like you, all of us are contributing to the creation of news through our publications in the social networks. Most of the time, the contents that we share in our personal uh, social profiles are not uh, relevant for the whole society, are not uh, issue of news. But in many cases, uh, I don't know, accidents or, or something that we take in, in our uh, camera or whatever becomes relevant in terms of news. And it has happened that over the last, uh, let's say, 15 years, since 2005 onwards, um, the amount of content coming from uh, normal users uh, uh, that have become uh, newsy, which is relevant in terms of media, it has become uh, bigger. And now there is another very interesting and relevant, in my opinion, phenomenon, which is just beginning. And you know very much about that, which is the importance, the increasing importance of the content created by robots. Um, nowadays, in the content that is shared by the media, just a few 
um, just a small part of the content are produced uh, by robots. Uh, uh, we can find some robotically produced uh, uh, content, maybe in the financial information or the weather information or the sports information. Some of the contents that relate to these uh, topics are already produced by, by robots. But uh, the um, the um, expectation for the 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 next few years at the is that that the content that is uh, automatically produced the automated content the, the content that is produced thanks to artificial intelligence will become more, more and more relevant and this is very important because robots and algorithms will become even more important for the regulation and mitigation of disinformation pro, uh, uh, problems so if the people who, like you, are uh, developing uh, technologies and, and standards to guide the development of uh, uh, artificial intelligence uh, and, and computing technologies in general, are not worried about the ne necessity of, of, of taking care uh, of uh, this ethical and socially responsible aspects, I believe that we can have a, a very uh, important problem over the next few years. So this was it. Uh, I hope that uh, it was a summarize of the ideas and I will be happy to discuss or answer any question that you may have. Thank you very much. Is there any question out there? Or Maria Jose? Ah. Estás en mute. Now, okay. Now, thank you, Ramon. As always, it has been a pleasure to listen to you. Uh, it has been a very interesting uh, seminar uh, for me, and I expected that uh, I'm sure that uh, for the rest of the audience, they found also uh, interesting this, this seminar. Then, well, uh, I would like uh, to know if there is a question if, uh, from the audience. David Torrens. David Seems Torrens. So. Okay. Yes. Hello, hello. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm moving, so you, you, you cannot see me. Um, thank you, thank you. Very, very interesting talk. I, I uh, sometimes uh, do not know what you mean or what people mean with information or new, because information for me is a number, but the news is an interpretation of that number. And now, as you said, the population is, is divided into uh, biological blocks, and it is very difficult that I get a new from another block. Okay, Fox News and, 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 and all the others and people that go to Fox, they don't know, go to the others. So to which level can we talk about a neutral information if most of the times people actually want to see themselves represented in the news. So they, want, they don't want the number, they want normally that the, the interpreter tells them what to think. This is this is this is to the level. So how to put all this into into what you said? Thanks. Thank you, thank you, David. You're absolutely right. I mean, I information and news are are two connected realities, uh, but they are not exactly the same. And all news here is, to some extent, subjective. There is no objective news, and there is no need of having objective news. You you need to to have. Um, respectful honest news that means that you are providing your own view of the of the of the reality of what is happening you focus on something and you forget about some other things because you can't account everything uh, every every perception is subjective not every news every perception is subjective even the information itself and you know very well uh, when you are uh, analyzing data you don't have all the data. There is always more data that will probably uh, somehow uh, 
moderate some of the aspects that you are analyzing with the amount of data that you have. So um, uh, there is no reali reality in, the, in, that, in that aspect. I'm, I must confess that I'm a, a little bit um, humble in this case because one of the people who joined this, <laughs> this seminar is uh, my professor of, of epistemology, Juan Jose Garcia Noblejas, who is uh, uh, a very uh, a professor who, who has uh, written a lot about this, about uh, uh, what is the relationship between the truth, reality, and news. And, uh, and uh, there is a philosophical discussion behind that. So uh, you are absolutely right. There are different questions, but still, I believe that uh, journalism is uh, is a contribution is, is actually it's a it's a it's a right for the, every uh, democratic society because it gives them uh, to the uh, to the people the opportunity to receive information about what is happening from different point of view obviously in democratic societies because in in totalitarian uh, regimes they have only one account of what is happening uh, so, uh, in democratic societies, this uh, multiple point of view gives you at least the chance of uh, making your own interpretation of what is happening. Thank you. Next Thanks. question, we have Salva. Yeah. So, Ramon, thank you. Thank you very much for a wonderful talk. I really enjoy it. Um, I have a sort of a philosophical question. And I would like to know your, your opinion on this. We have fake news and we have agencies that work to uh, verify the, the fact checkers. But is, is any bias in those agencies? So which news are verified, which ones are not, and, you know? Yeah, that, that's, that's another interesting question. First of all, let's uh, uh, recall one uh, important fact. Uh, in Spain, nowadays, just in Spain, we have more than 3,000 active digital media, news media, but just five fact-checking organization compared to the digital media, it's just a very tiny number. Um, and um, there is a kind of discussion or controversy, public controversy about the uh, ideological alignment of those uh, fact-checking organizations because they focus on something, but they forget some other issues. It is not 100% truth. Actually, it's not truth at all. Uh, I, I must, this is a full disclosure. Myself, I am... Um, a uh, member of the International Fact-Checking Organization, which is an international organization that is uh, somehow assessing, which is evaluating, I mean, not, 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 uh, not providing ideas, but just checking that they are doing things well. Uh, uh, I'm responsible for assessing for the International Fact-Checking Organizations, the fact-checking organizations in a Spanish language both here in Spain and in Latin America. I have uh, assessed organizations, uh, well, the organizations that probably all of you know, uh, Neutral, uh, Maldita, uh, Efe Verifica, some others here in Spain. And uh, I have also made that in, I don't know, in Chequeado, Argentina, but some others. And, um, and one of the elements that have to be complied by those organizations is that they cover um, claims for all the ideological spectrum, which is that, let's put it in, 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 in very clear uh, 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 terms here in Spain. This should cover both Ab Abascal and uh, Iglesias. You understand? I mean, the whole spectrum. And they do that. They do that. Uh, because if they don't do that, they don't get the, the credit. They don't, don't, don't get the, 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 the accreditation. So um, uh, they have uh, gotten the, they have got the accreditation because they actually demonstrated that they are doing that. But still, you are right in your question, Salvador, because even if you are covering everything, um, maybe you are more interested in something, for instance, I don't know. Um, mm, 
the lack of 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 uh, I, I forget the term um, igualdad, which is the uh, igualdad de género. What, what is this? Gender equality. G gender equality. Let, let, uh, you you might consider that gender equality is, is a key aspect. I mean, I I want to focus on that because this is one of the principles that I would like to uh, develop in my coverage. But some other organization may consider that I don't know environment. Uh, it's much more important. The climate change is much more important. So you are free to choose your elements and that doesn't mean that you are biased that means that you are free <laughs> and and uh, the problem here um is that we have probably still very few fact checking organizations just five in spanish in spain and probably we will need another five or ten to cover all the possibilities, to have a more balanced approach, but I I, I wouldn't say that they are they are uh, biased in that uh, from that point of view. I don't know if you agree with that. Yeah, fully agree. But it was curiosity to to not real experience on that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next question is Monica Cabrera. Monica? Yes. Hi. Sorry. I have. Yes. Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Yes, uh, so I have a couple of questions. Uh, I would like to read a little bit more on the data you show on the journalists, users, and robots. Uh, I mean, I, I would like to know if it's possible, what is the source, or how can I learn a little bit more about this? And uh, well, also, I don't know if you can send me through the chat. And also, I would like to know how the robots generate this news without journalists. It's like quite interesting for me. Okay, uh, I can share it with you, but it's my own approach. I mean, uh, uh, the, the graphic that I have shown and the ideas that I have shown, I have not taken them anywhere. Uh, it's just my own elaboration. Uh, we could actually um, uh, uh, back that with uh, data just to see how many journalists were working in, in the 90s and how many uh, journalists are working today and uh, with what is the amount of, uh, of uh, accounts that have been shared by regular users on social media and the uh, amount of uh, 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 automated robots that are already working in the newsrooms. Actually, there are some uh, studies who are uh, exploring that, but uh, what I have shown is not ex exactly a graphic, it's just a graphical representation it, it is not exactly i mean there, there were no um, numbers there just a, an approach to give an idea okay so if you are interested i can i can share it with you the graphic and the idea but uh, it's not published anywhere and uh, yet and uh, and uh, and what was excuse me what was the, the second question yeah no how do robots generate uh, ah, or okay okay news without journalists well, there, there is a, well, some idea. I mean, when you when you, I I I suggest the, the this this experiment. You you can go to the media, to any media, uh, not only here in Spain and in, in UK in US, and you put a uh, 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 robot uh, newsroom or or uh, robot journalism. Even there is a term already coined, which is robo journalism. In Spanish, it's quite to robo periodismo. Will be kind of weird, isn't it? Uh, but anyway, uh, and the, in this case, what they use is uh, is uh, some uh, uh, applications that are able to produce a text account, and nowadays also video uh, 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 productions that take raw material taken from the databases. For instance, I, I can I can mention one example. Um, the uh, minute by minute account of the football matches in many cases are written by journalists by reporters who are watching to the TV and they 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 explain uh, in their own words what is happening but in some cases there is no one uh, writing there is just a, a, a robot which is taking the information taken from the database which uh, the, the the data comes from the uh, evolution and the movements of the of the players football players over the pitch and they get that information and take taken on that information they are able to produce 
uh, some uh, um, accounts, some textual accounts. It seems that th there is someone uh, writing behind that, but actually the, the truth is that there are just machines. And uh, there is an increasing number of, of, of categories. I mentioned sports, I mentioned uh, financial content, also weather, and uh, probably in the future, I don't know, uh, political, I mean, elections, things like that will be subject for this kind of automated uh, news production. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay, we have, we have uh, uh, one question in, in the chat, an, an old question from Uruchi. Uh, do you think technology in ne is neutral and why? Wow, <laughs> that's a <laughs> tough question. Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't think so. Every instrument is somehow, uh, it's somehow uh, uh, a filter. Uh, which is able to do something, but it's not able to, or, uh, or it has to forget some other aspects. So, um, although I'm not, I, I don't see myself as someone who can actually develop that idea because it, that's really philosophically deep. Uh, but I don't. My, my first answer, my first approach, will be that they are they are not uh, objective. Okay, next question is from Natasha. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Ramon, very much for giving this amazing talk uh, about a very important topic for our society. I have three questions. Um, one is related actually to technology and actually to AI that helps uh, detect these fake news. And we all mm -hmm. know that AI algorithms are... <laughs> Uh, prone to making mistakes. So there would be some bias there, I suppose, even in, de in detecting fake news. The second bias might come from people who are uh, actually these controllers and finders of fake news. For instance, and again, I'm no expert in this, and this is just kind of the normal citizen. For instance, my understanding is that YouTube has fake news detector for Serbia that is actually in Croatia. And these two countries fought a very bloody civil war 25 years ago, very recently, and have very different views of the history to the point that Croatia celebrates the so-called Operation Storm that expelled 200,000 civilians, Serb civilians back to Serbia in 1995. So this is a national holiday and a celebration while in Serbia is a memorial to these victims of ethnic cleansing. Now we have people sitting in Croatia because the language is the difference between Croatian and Serbian is like the difference between Catalan and Valencian, right? They understand. So they are actually filtering some fake news, calling fake news, you know, stuff that comes on YouTube in Serbia in that language. So that's the second uh, uh, question, I guess, that I have. And the third, as a normal person who doesn't do research in this fake news detection, what do we do and how do we protect ourselves from all of these biases and how do we uh, gain confidence in that what we are hearing is actually correct? Uh, I wish I knew. <laughs> I wish I knew. Um, now it's a, it's a, it's a, well, the, uh, regarding your, your first question, uh, I mentioned that technology, it's a factor, a propitiatory factor uh, for the spread of uh, this information. But at the same time, as you mentioned, it is also a counter uh, weight against uh, this information because it allows, for instance, uh, technologies for early detection of uh, this information. Actually, one of the, probably many of you know much more than me about this, but uh, nowadays one of the uh, topics or uh, fields in which uh, there is a huge interest in terms of uh, um, research about this information is how to spot, how to uh, detect in the very first moment when uh, the, uh, uh, there is an outbreak of, uh, of, uh, of this information. Uh, you see that I'm not using the term fake news, okay? Uh, this information. So, um, so 
uh, it is true. I mean, you you can you can fight you can fight against bad technology with better technology, but you cannot fight against bad technology just with technology. That's my approach. Uh, you need more than technology. Uh, if you try to stop the problems and the whole uh, um, phenomena associated to uh, this information just by technology, you won't be success. I mean, you won't success. You will fail. Why is that? Because you you also need some legal um, uh, framework. I mean, you 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 need some uh, legal structure that al allows you to to um, to fight against this information. And this is probably the most important uh, developments that we have seen in Europe, especially in Europe, over the last uh, three four years. Uh, here in Spain, um, some of you will recall November last year, the uh, uh, committee uh, against this information was created. It was quite a disputed or debated uh, 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 situation. But again, there is a, 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 a European approach to fight against uh, this information. And this, uh, well, uh, since you are much more uh, related to the situation of Serbia that you, you, you mentioned before, obviously you explain very well, but let me go to the third question. How do we protect ourselves against this information? Uh, it's, it's, it's not true, it's not easy, but I believe that beyond technology and beyond legal framework, we need media literacy. We need to know how the content are produced, uh, which are the uh, aspects that can mm, suggest the possibility that something is uh, deceptive. And uh, um, so, and this should be talked, especially to the youngest uh, uh, people. And it's not, uh, it's not due, I mean, uh, in Spain, in Spain, the um, not only in Spain, but I, I'm talking in Spain because we are here. But um, over the last 25 years, the uh, education uh, programs uh, uh, and the education uh, laws have fostered the digital uh, letter, um, literacy, digital literacy, which means that you are able to. Um, interact with uh, computers. But that doesn't mean exactly media literacy, which is the content. You can use the technologies, but you don't want not, you don't know exactly how to do that uh, in, in good sense. And uh, the idea is that we should train, we should uh, uh, um, educate our, our young people, and not only the young people, that uh, applies also to the, uh, uh, to the older people, uh, how to uh, manage with content that you gather on the social network. Otherwise, we can uh, uh, every day see the problems that we are seeing on the, on the network, sexting, we are seeing, uh, um, I don't know, all, all kinds of, of, of crimes that are happening on the, on the social networks. Okay, next, next question is from uh, Marta Villegas. Oh, thank you. And, and thanks, Ramon, for this nice talk. Very, very interesting. So, so my question is, okay, you told, you said that fake is, is, is not a new thing, right? It's an old issue and an old problem. But do you think that with mass media and this robot that can generate automatically fakes, uh, are we facing a new era, a new challenge, or is just a, a, a question of, of uh, the same thing, but uh, at a bigger scale? So uh, there, are, there are generative language models that, that can, for instance, rewrite the whole Wikipedia just producing uh, fake articles just for fun, right? And they look absolutely real. I mean, and this is not just fake news, it's, it's a alternative reality or fake reality. I mean, how do we face this, uh, right? Um, well, I, 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 my approach to your question is that we are entering
another category. I mean, it's not just a, a, another uh, magnitude, but it's another category. And uh, because it is true that the, uh, not only the, the amount of content that, that can be produced or fake uh, uh, um, is, is huge, but also due to another fact is that we are losing intermediaries. <laughs> this, this is relevant for me because before the, 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 the situation that, 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 that we have today, uh, there were some in professional intermediaries. I, I am talking from the point of view, for instance, of the media. I mean, professional journalists were responsible for going to the sources, taking the information, process that information professionally, and serve it to the public. But nowadays, those intermediaries have disappeared. And it's from that point of view, since the uh, real or the uh, or the deliberately um, deceptive content can reach directly to the whole society, we are entering another another completely, I don't know, different, but I will say much more worrying situation. Okay, thank you. Last question is from Marta Mele. Hi, thank you, Ramon. That was a great talk. I had several questions, but I'm going to focus on one. This is following up on what what you mentioned on what we can do with you know the youngster, the young people that are coming. Because one of the things that I've observed the most when we talk about fake media is all these messages that run on WhatsApp when people do never cite the source. So mm -hmm. a lot of the most, a more, I mean, and as a scientist. To, I think to all of us, right? We have to cite the source all the time. So to me, it's really striking how people can send these messages and never cite the source. And in a world with a perfect media, I know you said it's not perfect, right? But I mean, citing the source would be a first step really to, to stop some of the most, you know, or, and then I wanna hear your thoughts about that. Well, that's a very interesting and relevant question indeed. Uh, not only due to the fact that um, because the people is not taking care about the relevant sources or, or um, let's say, well-informed sources about anything, but also because, as I mentioned just in the in the previous question, there is a switch in the in the um, uh, let's say the um, the categories that we uh, gave. Um, uh, I, I don't even know to explain this in Spanish. I, uh, I will try to explain this. Look at that. Nowadays in WhatsApp, for instance, uh, it's much more influential for you. If you get the, info, uh, the one uh, information from your, I don't know, best friend or for your sister or for your mother, because they, they are directly connected to you and you want imagine that they are trying to deceive you. But instead, if you are getting some information from Oxford University, you say, okay, Oxford, come on, Oxford is too far from my house. So I, I'm not sure about that. But my mother right, right. will never, will never lie me. So there is a switch in the, in the relevancy of the sources. Yeah. Uh, my mother is much more important than Oxford University. So we have another problem here. Well, uh, Ramon, thank you. We have a lot of questions that are in the chat and people want to talk and continue with this, but we are out of time. It's, it's a pity. Uh, I don't know if, uh, what, uh, can we manage this and to, 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 to answer these questions and so on. Uh, we, we will think on this, okay? Um, but uh, it's, it's time, okay? Then uh, thank you uh, for everything. Thank you for this nice talk and to answer all these questions it has been really, really interesting. And uh, well, uh, I don't know if Alfonso, that is the boss, has one question. Is the only the only one that <laughs> is allowed? <laughs> Sorry. But I, no, I, no, we have we are, we are running very late. Thanks, uh, come on. I was going to ask you what is the first newspaper that you read every morning. 
uh, every morning. It depends on the day. It depends on the day. Oh, that's when, a when, that's no, a no, no, no. I, of course, that's a journalistic answer. But it depends if my uh, football team has played. It depends <laughs> of my, if my football team has won or have lost. And uh, depending on that, uh, I, 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 I choose. But I try to uh, read both national, local, and international press, the three of them. Um, and uh, when I want to learn something about some specific issue, I try to choose the best, the most well-informed organization that is dealing with that. If I want to know something about financial developments, I go to Financial Times, I go to financial newspapers or whatever. If I want to know something about the sports, I go to, to publications that are dealing with that. So it depends on the topic, I choose my source. Okay, thank you. We are really happy to have you uh, here today and uh, also as a collaborator, because I think there is a Obviously, there is an interesting problem. You only have to see the number of questions and the discussion in the chat. And hopefully, there will be some interesting contribution from the computational side, you know, the text mining and all the, all the other stuff. So, thanks and thanks to, to everybody for, uh, for the questions and for staying. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so bye. much. Bye. Bye bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. bye.